There is power in the word of God, real, true power. And we see that in the gospel today when Jesus is at the synagogue and therein comes a possessed man. And uh, Jesus commands by his authority and power, by his word that he speaks, the demon to be expelled, exercised from that possessed individual. And the man convulses as the demon is exorcised. That is the rite of exorcism that Jesus performed uh, in different accounts in the gospel. So it's very, very real. Power in the word of Jesus Christ. It is his holy power. He says to that demon, quiet, come out of him. And everybody was amazed that Jesus commanded even the demons. I don't know if you remember that 1970 movie called The Exorcist. Yeah, I think I saw it when I was about 12 years of age, and I have never fully recovered. It's one of the reasons probably I'm a priest. But um, I couldn't go to sleep that night. It's a, uh, it's a scary movie, for sure, about a possessed young girl. And uh, it's actually based on a true account of an uh, exorcism that was performed in 1949 by a Jesuit priest. And uh, Newsweek described the situation this way uh, about this uh, true ec exorcism. It says, pictures, chairs, and the boy's bed would suddenly move about. At night, the boy could rarely sleep. After he was admitted to Georgetown University Hospital, the boy began to mouth fierce curses in ancient languages which he did not know. And at one point, while strapped to his bed, long red scathes appeared on his body. And the priest uh, in his journal would document this uh, as well. And uh, that priest, uh, a great Jesuit, um, his life, he said, changed dramatically after that exorcism. I imagine so. And, uh, you know, uh, that priest was only to able to exorcise that demon um, by the power of God's word, by the authority of Jesus. And um, this is part of the exorcism ritual which we priests use um, to perform exorcisms. And pay attention to this language because it's about the authority of the word. So I cast you out, unclean spirit, along with every satanic power of the enemy, every specter from hell, and all your fell companions in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be gone and stay far from this creature of God, for it is he who commands you, he who flung you headlong from the heights of heaven into the depths of hell. It is he who commands you. you. See, it's not the power of the priest, it's the power of Jesus. It's the power of God's holy word. And boy, is it powerful. There's great power in his holy word. Think about uh, the words of baptism. When the priest or deacon pours the water over the child's head and says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Through those words given to us by Jesus to perform this ritual, that person is born anew. They receive the Holy Spirit. They're made brand new in, in, the, in the person of Jesus. Think about that. They are brought salvation. And the words at, at Mass, the consecration, that I say, the priest says, take and eat, this is my body. Through those words, the bread and wine are changed in the substance of Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, becomes present. Through those words, if I don't say those words, you don't get the Eucharist. Those words confect the Holy Eucharist, make God present. How amazing is that? In the words of absolution and confession, when the priest says, I absolve you from your sins, those words must be said by the priest, otherwise sins are not absolved. But those words take away your sins, no matter what sin that might be. The words at a wedding, when the uh, husband and wife profess their consent to one another, those words form them into one. They're no longer merely two separate individuals, but become one in the covenant, unbreakable covenant by God himself. Words have power. The words of Jesus Christ. And think about the words in sacred scripture. 
These are the words of God. These are his love letter to us. He's writing us a letter, huh? And the deacon holds that book of the Gospels. It kind of struck me this morning. When we hold that book of the Gospels, we do it because there's power in this book, unlike any other book, because it's God's holy word. And it has the power to transform lives. All those words have transformed our lives. They've impacted us and billions of people. The Word of God has power. We don't know what happened to that possessed man after that. We don't hear about him. But we do know one thing, that that encounter with the Word of Jesus Christ changed his life forever, didn't it? I mean, he was possessed and he was changed. How beautiful. When we encounter the living word of Jesus, we are too transformed. And today, even through the rite of exorcism, sometimes I get calls for exorcisms, and I just refer those right to Father Kessler. It's wonderful. <laughs> Quiet is what Jesus says to that demon quiet in order to expel the demon. Well, we have issues in our own lives, don't we? Demons within us that keep us from loving Jesus more. And Jesus says to us, quiet. You know, we have so much noise, constantly noise. And I'm not just talking about audible noise, right? Like music, although certainly it's one thing. What about other noise like the internet? How, off, how much time do we spend on the internet or on Netflix or, or Hulu or Disney uh, Plus or any of the other things? How about Instagrams or Facebooks or uh, Twitters? All these things you spend a lot, we spend a lot of time on. How much time do we actually have to be quiet? To be in the presence of God's holy word? Because there's a lot of hurt out there, even within our own lives. Anxiety, stress. You know what we have to do? We have to let Jesus speak to us. Cast those worries aside. Cast them from us. Cast away the sins with which we have struggle. We can only do so if we are quiet in his holy presence. I just really encourage us, especially as we enter into Lent very soon, to spend time being quiet. Because even when we pray sometimes, we're the ones doing all the talking, aren't we? Oh, Lord, you know, thank you so much for all that you've given me. I, and pray for my, you know, give my son uh, grace that he, he can come back to the church, Lord. And, and, you know, if I can win the mega millions, that'd be great too, Lord. But maybe not. So we talk, 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 which is okay. But we have to listen. We have to listen to his holy word. Because there's power within it. So that's why, for instance, my dear brothers and sisters, we put in our bulletin every week, we put the gospel passage for the next Sunday, and we go down the procedure as to how to listen to God's holy word. It's called Lexio Divina, prayer with scripture. I just really encourage you, if nothing else, each week do that. Spend time in his holy word. Let that power of God's word convert us. Because we're all going ongoing conversion of heart. And let him expel demons from our lives. That's the point of the gospel, I think, today. So, let's spend time being quiet in his holy presence. And as the man in the gospel learned today, it is often how our lives can change forever.